I really hope that I can see my friends soon. I hope the weather stays. I want to keep up with my tan. Never thought I'd see the day, but I really hope we get back to school. Hi, I'm Destiny. Hey, my name's Chris. And I'm Hannah. It's our privilege to welcome you to the Faith at Home series. The Church of England have teamed up with Oak National Academy and we are going to be bringing you a short assembly. And this morning, we're all here along with a few others to talk to you today about hope. Hope, on the surface, appears to be just about wishful thinking. It can sound like dreaming, but is there more to it? Is it possible that there's more to hope than simply just wishful thinking? Here are some students from St Mary Redcliffe and Temple School in Bristol with their thoughts on hope. We are students from St Mary Redcliffe and Temple School in the heart of Bristol. Though we are separated, our school helps us to be fully alive. Hope is at the heart of all we do. Hope means a lot to me. Hope feels like freedom. Light in the darkest room, something that's always there. It feels like warm because of the sunshine. If I don't have hope, I, I can't really push on and do what I really want. Hope to me is the key workers working together to get us through these hard times. I wonder how you'd answer the question, what is hope? I'm sure you'd agree with lots of what was said, especially with Ethan's comment about key workers. In last week's assembly, Archbishop Justin Welby talked about hope, and he shared some of his thoughts on one of his heroes, Nelson Mandela. One of my heroes is the man on the front of this book, Nelson Mandela. He was imprisoned for 26 years because of a struggle against the oppressive apartheid regime in South Africa at the time. He was in prison from 1964 to 1990, came out and was elected president of the country and reconciled so much of the hatred there. While he was in prison, he remained positive. He was patient. He learned not to hate. And he always kept going under pressure. Positivity, patience, keeping going under pressure. Three Ps that speak of how we nurture hope. One of the wonderful things he said, which came out of his hope, was may your choices reflect your hopes, not your fears. That would be my prayer for you today. What a great story of hope. Mandela, through positivity and patience, kept going under pressure. Have you ever faced a challenge that seems beyond you, too, too great to overcome. Sometimes in life, we need to put our hope and our trust in someone, some people, something, and it can be tough, but also very rewarding. You're about to meet Ashley. Like me, she hates roller coasters, but she chose, in the words of Nelson Mandela, to reflect her hopes and not her fears. Life at the moment can really feel like a roller coaster. Some of us have real fears that can affect the way we think and act. Here's David to tell us about how choosing hope can give a different viewpoint. So what keeps us going through life's ups and downs, when life seems speedy and when it seems to drowse? Well, there is only one thing that will keep you going, no matter which speed is felt, and that is hope. 
and something else. Because we all have a spirit that connects us to something through life's downs and ups. It's a hope in something other than yourself. It's a knowledge of something bigger than us. If you followed that closely, that was a really interesting thought. Perhaps we don't have to put our hope in our own strength or our own ability to get through hard times. Maybe we can put our hope in something else other than ourselves. Right now, we're currently putting our hope in the key workers who are working together to get us through this tough time. For Christians, they put their hope in God. Here's a student from Blue Coat Coventry to explain the hope that they have. Hi everyone, my name is Grace. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Faith is being sure of what you hope for, to be certain of what you cannot see. Now we have thought about everyday things we are hopeful. But as a Christian, I have faith in what I hope for, because I put my trust in God. I know he will go through with his promises. He has done it before. There are examples all throughout the Bible. For example, there is Moses leading the Israelites out of Egypt into the Promised Land. Moses never knew exactly what was going to happen, but he put his hope in God, and because of that, had confidence he could carry on. More than ever, today we currently don't know what's going to happen in our world. That's why hope is so important. Even when it doesn't look like things are going to turn out the way we planned, and there's trouble along the way, we are not shaken but in our hope because everything he has done before. Whether it's the big things or the small things, God is there for us. Our hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised and its strength is in his faithfulness and how good he is. Thank you. Hope is powerful and we hope that you can go away a little more hopeful in the knowledge that you are not alone. But before we leave you, we've got two things left to do. Firstly, students from St. Mary Redcliffe in Temple School are gonna lead us in a prayer and give us an idea for lockdown. And secondly, there's a lot of people giving hope at the moment. So the least we can do is say a little thank you. As part of the Faith at Home programme, we are focusing our prayers on hope. Creator God, send your Holy Spirit to fill us with hope today. Hope that rises like the sun, and provides us with faith. Hope that inspires us to get out of bed and face any day. Hope that can change someone's story and someone's prospect. Hope that can guide us to the right path when we've lost it. May we live in hope and grow in the likeness of your son, Jesus. Amen. As part of the Faith at Home program, here's something to try out. I think we all should need something to remind us what we will be going back to. This is a hope jar. It's full of all the hopes that you want. You write down a hope you, which you want to do but can't do because of the coronavirus. Then you put it in the jar, close the jar, and then when lockdown is over, you take it out and you do it, you're grateful for it and you have fun. And be thankful to God that um, we are free again. aunties, brothers, to all the sisters, uncles, mothers, to the grandparents and all the others. We thank you. We thank you. For all the dinners you've prepared. When you've held us when we feel scared. When you've tidied up our rooms. For all those family calls on Zoom. When you're kind when we feel sad. When you're patient when we get mad. When your smile makes us feel great. While you're spinning all those plates. You head up to the shop. Then you take the chance to stop. When you make some time for fun. Though there's so much to be done. When your work seems really tough. And you come home feeling broke. Because you're doing all this stuff. We thank you, you're enough. We thank you, you're enough. To all the fathers, aunties, brothers. To all the sisters, uncles, mothers. The grandparents and all the others. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, you're enough. We thank you, you're enough. Thanks for joining us today. See you next week. God bless. See you soon. And don't forget to wash your hands. <laughs>